Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, angles and plane figures. And for this particular subtopic, we'll be covering angle properties of polygons, part B. We did part A. This is the second section of the same concept. And uh, we have uh, a few questions on, uh, on the same to help us with illustrations on... Uh, on how to solve problems involving angle properties of polygons. And, 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 and then, uh, of course, at the end of the lesson, we'll be having some assignment, some questions just to help you practice and to help you check on your understanding of the concept as we are going to discuss during this lesson. So uh, one is that you should be able to remember that uh, sum of all interior angles in the polygon, whether regular or irregular, remember there are two types, we have those that have all their sides the same in size. And uh, of course, size, sides and interior angles equal in measure. And then we have those that have got certain angles different from others. And even the sides, some sides are longer, others are shorter. So we have varied uh, sizes when it comes to the sides of the given polygons. So sum of all interior angles given by the formula So we have this formula here, 2n minus 4 into bracket 90. Or this, this, this formula can simplify to this one here. You know, or this, this, the original, can simplify to the other one. You know. So if you divide, you know, if you have 2 by 3, 2 by 4, for example, this is 8. You can still decide to divide this by 2 and then multiply this by 2. So if you divide this by 2, it will be 2. Multiply the other one by 2, it will be 4. You still get 8. Or you can divide this by 2 and multiply the other one by 2. So dividing this by 2 is 1 and multiplying the other by 2 is 8. So you still get 8. So that's what I'll do. I'll divide this by 2 so that I end up with n minus 2. And then I multiply the other one by 2 to get 1 and I get 8. So they, are, they can be used interchangeably. Basically, they mean the same thing. So n represents the number of sides. For example, if you have, uh, like we have said, the sum of interior angles in a polygon in a, a quadrilateral, the four-sided figure, 360. You see, you have four-sided figure. The number of sides is four. Four minus two is two. Two by 180 is 360. Even when you look at something like a triangle, whereby the number of sides is three. So three minus one is, three minus two is one. One by 180 is 180. Or if you use this one here, three by two is six. Six minus four is two. Two by 90 is 108. So that formula can be used to find the sum of interior angles of a polygon, whether regular or irregular. Yes. And of course, now to find the size of each, that is, if you have regular polygon, then the size of each interior angle, I representing the size of each interior angle is given by 2n minus 4 into bracket 90, you divide by the number of sides. Just to that. For example, if it's 180 up here, you divide by 3, triangle. You'll get 60, 60, 60 each. Or, or, you have i is equals to n minus 2, bracket 180, then you divide by n. This applies for regular polygons only, you know, where you get the number of, I mean, the size of each interior angle. And of course, now, if you have, uh, again, if you have, like a triangle, for example, I've just used this, the, the least polygon, the, the polygon with the least number of sides. Then you extend maybe this. You know, this is an exterior. So I is here, exterior is here. So you see interior and interior plus exterior is 100. And it is, they form what, what we call sum of angles in a straight line. That's what we're saying. One exterior angle plus the, the interior angle is equal to 180 degrees. And of course, for all the polygons, all of them, sum of exterior angles is usually 360 degrees. So if you want to know if, like, for example, in the case of regular polygons, just take n times the size of each exterior angle, it will give you 360 degrees. Like triangle, which has each of the interior angles 60, 60 by 3 will give you, I mean, if each interior angle is 60, it means, look at a triangle, so if the interior angle is 60, it means exterior angle will be 120 degrees. So 120, even when you extend this, you'll still get 120 there. 
that is equilateral triangle. So this is 60. You extend this, you still get 120 here. So you add 120 plus 120 plus 120 is 360. Is that the same as taking 3, which is the number of sides times 120 will give you 360 degrees. You see? So this formula is used for the sum of all the interior angles. I mean, the exterior angles is 360 degrees. So instead of adding all of them, you can just take one. That is, if it's a regular polygon, one exterior angle you multiply by the number of sides will give you 360. All of them, the sum of all the exterior angles will be 360 all the time, whether regular or irregular. But this formula only applies for regular, where all the interior angle and exterior angles are the same. Yes. So you have then exterior angle can then be given by divide both sides by n 360 over the number of sides. And again, number of sides, you divide both sides by, if you want the number of sides, you divide both sides by E. So you have 360, 360 divided by each exterior angle. So this formula here, this one, and these are very, very important. You can see they are here. So let's look at examples. Find the interior angles of a regular polygon. Oh, the interior angles of regular uh, regular hexagon. So the number of sides means it's it's the number of sides is six. So the interior angles of, of, of the hexagon are this. Find the value of the smallest angle. So you need to find the sum. So you have uh, S n is given by n minus two bracket one hundred and eighty. That's the sum of all the interior angles. We need to, to get that. So the SN here will be 6. 6 minus 2 is 6 minus 2 is 4. So this will be 4. No. It will be 6. Because the number of sides is 6. 6 minus 2. And then you multiply by by 180. So you write one 180 next to it here. So uh, then that is going to be equal to 4 by 180 degrees. So what is that going to be? So we have, uh, you can use the calculator 4 times 180. The calculator will give you 720. 720. Yeah. So we have, you have to add all these. So 2x plus a half of x plus 40 plus 110 plus 130 plus 160 degrees, this equals to 720 degrees. Yeah, 720 degrees. The sum, so you add 110, 150, 280, you know, just, just add all this. So this will be two and a half of X. So two and a half, maybe I'll work out the LCM here is two. So one goes into two, two times, two by two is four. 2 goes into 2 ones, so this is 4x. 2 goes into 2 ones, 1 by 1 is 1x. Yeah. And then plus all these numbers. All these numbers you can use the calculator. So you have 40, and then you add to 110, and then you add to 130, and then you add to 160, and so you get 440. So this is uh, this is equals to seven hundred and twenty. So four forty can go to the other side. So this one we have five x over two should be equal to seven twenty minus four hundred and forty. So five x over two should be equal to what? So seven two zero minus four four zero. That is two hundred and eighty. So x should be equal to 280 times the reciprocal of this, which is 2 over 5. So 280 times uh, 2 over 5. That is 112. That is the value of x. So the first angle, so you can list them. The first one will be... 200 and you know 2 by x and x is 112 so 224 the second one will be a half of this which is 56 
the third one of course is 40 110 130 and 160 degrees so which one is the least 40 so least angle or the smallest so smallest the smallest angle you try and see and solve and then and then uh, you'll be able to find the smallest the smallest angle is 40 degrees find the sum of the interior angles of an octagon octagon so here you simply use the formula sn is equals to n minus 2 into bracket 180 this formula you should be able to remember so octagon is uh, 8 minus 2 you multiply by 180 degrees so that is 6 now n is 8 octagon number of sides is 8 so 8 minus 2 is 6 6 by 180 so 180 by 180 by 6 so that is 1080 that is 1080 degrees just as simple as that the sum of the interior angle of a polygon is 10, 1,980. Find the number of triangles. So number of triangles. Number of triangles is given by the formula N minus 2. It's like when you have a quadrilateral i mean a quadrilateral like this one here then you just join this to this vertex you get the number of triangles are how many you have two you see so quadrilateral has how many sides four four minus two is two see we have this triangle and this triangle too if you have something like a pentagon, for example, this is a pentagon, one, two, three, four, five. Then you can join this to this, and then you join this to this. So how many sides do we have? How many triangles do we have? One, two, three. So number of triangles is given by, so number of triangles, the formula is here. So five minus two is three. See, we are getting the number of, so that is, the, the n minus 2 represents the number of triangles and of course that's why we multiply by 180 because now each sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 that's why the sum of all the interior angles is given by n minus 2 into bracket 180 degrees because the sum of interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees we already know that but then you find the number of triangles by taking the number of sides less 2 so you subtract two. So basically, what this is what we are doing. So we'll just use the formula for sum, which is uh, n minus two into bracket 180 degrees. But now what you are looking for is the number of triangles n minus two. So I will not open up this bracket. I'm not looking for the number of sides. You know. So I have one nine eight zero is equals to n minus two into bracket 80. So I'm looking for n minus two. You know, so so this is going to be so divided by 180 divided by 180. So we have n minus two equals to so 1980 minus divided by 180. We get 11. So the number of triangles are 11. You see, so number of triangles. to 11 but then hence find the number of sides of the polygon so n should be equal to now 2 can move to the other side should be equal to 11 plus 2 which is 13 of course any 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 polygon that is having more than 10 number of sides will not be asking you to state the name when it comes to the names within the scope of form 1 syllabus we'll just be asking you from 3 to 3 to 10 
So that is all. We have a few questions just to help you practice on what you've been covering, what you've been learning through this lesson. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time, goodbye.